So let's begin this imaging session and see what a year of, of learning. <clears throat> so let's begin this imaging session. So let's begin this imaging session. 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 Let's begin this imaging. All right. So let's begin this imaging session. <laughs> I can't even say it. imaging session. I am back in Toronto. We have returned from our Southern Ontario trip and had a blast at all the campgrounds that were local to Ontario. It was an amazing trip with the family and I had great opportunities to shoot celestial objects uh, and I was very happy with all the results. Uh, it's easy to see why Bortle 4 zones are better than Bortle 9 zones. Um, but tonight I am back in Toronto and I'm going to be shooting in a Bortle 9. Uh, my plans for tonight are to shoot the Orion Nebula. I actually haven't shot this object in about a year. And it was, uh, it was also my first deep sky object that I shot. So I'm pretty excited to get back at that and see uh, what a years of knowledge and experience can do um, after learning astrophotography. I still remember getting my first frames back when I was shooting the Orion Nebula a year ago and I was so excited with my results. Uh, I had two sessions before that season ended and uh, both times I was very happy with my end results. But tonight I'm going to accumulate all the knowledge and experience that I've, I've got and put that towards uh, the Orion Nebula one more time. As with the last time I shot this object, I'm going to be using the uh, Celestron 6SC telescope that you see behind me, as well as the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Auto guiding will be done with my 50mm Orion guide scope and the ASI 120 color camera. When I last shot this object, I used the Bader inch and a quarter moon and sky glow filter. But for tonight, I plan to use the Bader UV and IR cut filter to see what kind of detail I can bring out. One of the new things I purchased for this uh, telescope rig is actually a dew heater. It does fit my 8-inch Raza. It is a 7-inch to 8-inch strap, um, but it does fit on this 6-inch as well. I just have to have it overlap in one spot. Uh, that's not too big of a deal, um, and hopefully it's going to work well for tonight. It is a bit cold tonight. It's about 0 degrees right now, and it might drop to about minus 5. Um, but that's fine for astrophotography. That's fine for clear nights. Uh, let's take advantage of it. All right, so Orion is not going to show up for another hour or so, so I'm going to head inside and wait for these clouds to pass because uh, it's still actually a bit cloudy. Uh, this is to be expected. It's not supposed to clear up until about 12 o'clock, which is perfectly timed for when I need to shoot the Orion Nebula. I'll catch you with you guys later, and hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so I'm back inside where it's nice and warm and uh, I wanted to show you my previous images of the Orion Nebula. Uh, so as you can see here, this is my first image of the Orion Nebula that I took. I used my Canon T2i to take this image uh, with no filters and uh, yeah, it was my first time shooting a deep sky object and also my first time processing one. Uh, the results are pretty good. Uh, I ended up pretty happy with them. If I go over to my next image here, uh, this is my second attempt shooting the Orion Nebula. Uh, I was using the Bader Moon and Sky Glow filter, and I was able to get a, a bit more detail out of that. Uh, back when I stacked these images, I was really just collecting as much data as I could uh, and then stacked them together in Deep Sky Stacker. Um, I wasn't really combing through the images and seeing which ones were good and which ones were bad. So shooting with the 6SC telescope here, you can see it gets real close up to the object, but I am anxious to see if I can get a, a nice frame using the Raza 8-inch telescope on the Orion Nebula. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get the Running Man and the Orion Nebula in there, and uh, maybe a bit more. I'm also excited to shoot the Flame and Horsa Nebula. I haven't shot those objects yet, um, so uh, it'd be nice to see what I can get with the Raza telescope. But both of those projects will be saved for another night. Alright, so let's talk about my imaging drain. Attached straight to the back of the telescope is the Celestron 6.3 Focal Reducer. Uh, after that is the 2-inch adapter, which attaches to the uh, Sarazona filter tray here. That's where I have my UV IR cut filter. And that attaches right to the ASI 294 camera. 
All right, so my cable management is not as good as uh, when I have my Raza. I also have a few more cables to manage. Uh, so I have three cables now going up to the telescope, two going into the mount itself, and one going up to the dew heater. And at the back, I have two cables coming from uh, the camera here. Uh, thankfully, the ASI-120 can be powered by USB from the other camera, so that's a, a port saver. The cables are still out of the way, so that's good, um, but something to watch out for. All right, so it's time to put the Batnoff mask on the telescope to get perfect focus. Let's just stick this right on the piece of glass there. All right, so everything is set up. My polar alignment is done to the best of my ability. The object is in frame and in focus, and I'm ready to start taking some subs on the Orion Nebula. I still remember first shooting this object way back uh, a year ago, and uh, I was amazed with the first subs that I got back. Uh, back then I was only using a, a Canon T2i camera to get the job done, uh, and it did pretty well, um, but I am very excited to see what the CCD uh, cooled camera can do. I took some sample subs, and it looks like the 15 second exposures that I plan to do tonight uh, might be a bit too much on the Orion Nebula with this new camera. Um, so I'm dialing that back down to 10 seconds tonight, just to get some more detail in that uh, star forming area uh, on the Orion Nebula. I've been anxious to get back at this object since I first took images of it uh, a year ago. Uh, again, that was my first time shooting a deep sky object, and I've learned so much since then. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what a year's worth of knowledge can bring. Anyways, it's getting real cold, so I'm going to continue monitoring this from the inside of the house, uh, right beside the fire maybe, and I'll check in with you guys later. Alright, I'm back inside using TeamViewer to stream my acquisition PC inside to my main PC. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using Astrophotography tool to do the capturing and I'm capturing 10 second exposures at an ISO of 120, which is Unity Gain. I'm also doing dithering, and I've set the camera to be minus 20 degrees Celsius. I might call it quits around 2.30 tonight, uh, which should be plenty of data on this very bright object. In total, I acquired close to three hours of data. I unfortunately wasn't able to use all of it, as my object went out of focus halfway through the night. I stacked just over an hour's worth of good data and processed my final image in PixInsight. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm always amazed with what I'm able to capture with my telescope from my light-polluted backyard.